Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I created this Clueless, the movie inspired Tumblr design. Now Clueless was one of my favorite movies growing up. I absolutely love Alicia Silverstone, I still do. I hope you guys enjoy this video. You're gonna find all the products that you see listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. And you guys, if you're new to my channel, please be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a new video. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so first things first, we're going to start with a cup that's already been primed and painted white. So it was already sanded, already spray painted white, nice matte finish, okay? And what we wanna do is we are going to do yellow glitter on the top and I'm gonna do pink glitter on the bottom. So I want to tape off the sections so we can paint them individually. So what we're gonna wanna do is measure about Mm, yay high wherever we want that pink section to stop and the yellow section to start and then we will tape it off all right so the way we're going to mark our pink section off is by stacking some things <laughs> whenever you have around and holding your pencil tight against it and then we're going to turn the cup around against the pencil and that's going to mark our line Mine ended up being about four inches. This is a 30 ounce skinny straight. If I was doing a 20 ounce, I would probably have a smaller section here. All right, so you're just gonna hold the pencil tight there. Okay, and then I have a nice straight line all the way around. Okay, and then we're just going to mark this off with some Painter's tape. I always like to take the sticky off of my tape. <laughs> run it against your clothes. Probably shouldn't run it against your hair, but whatever. All right, and then I'm going to tape off the bottom first, and we're going to tape uh, paint the top yellow. Okay. Get any extra pencil just to erase that. Okay, and then so I don't have to tape off the whole bottom, I'm going to use saran wrap to mask off the remainder of the bottom of my cup. So now we're going to take this over to the spray booth and I'm going to spray paint this yellow. All right, and then once this is completely dry, we're going to take this off. This only took about a half hour or so to dry. Depends on how hot or cold it is in your area. Uh, so then we're just going to take this tape off. Okay, and then we'll replace it right along that line there. I'm going to reuse my plastic. And then we're going to use uh, candy pink for the pink section. So once my paint is dry, I'm going to use one inch painter's tape to quickly mask off the pink side because we're going to glitter the yellow side first. I've got five milliliters of fast setting epoxy already mixed here. This is the amazing quick coat from Illumilite. And I want to spread on a very, very thin coat. I mean, I only dip, like, dipped my finger into that pot of epoxy once or twice 
and that is it. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. We don't want to see any lines, okay? Once I've got that applied, I'm just going to let it rip with my yellow glitter. I'm using Daroga today from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is a newer yellow color. It's a beautiful custom mix. It's got all different kinds of like shapes and shades in it. It's a really beautiful yellow, lots of fun, iridescent, and even like some opal pieces. I just love it. Okay. Um, once we get this fully coated, I'm going to aggressively tap off the excess and then we'll immediately lift that one inch painter's tape from the pink section and then using the same mixed epoxy that I used to spread that yellow glitter, we're going to add that to the pink side, being very careful to stay away from the yellow side, okay? Because we don't want any of that loose glitter getting into this pink side. If you don't trust yourself to do it like this, then wait till the yellow side's dry, tape off the yellow side at the bottom, and then epoxy and glitter the pink side, okay? Also, you could use Mod Podge, but I am not a fan. So I'm just going to take my chances here and do this all at once. The pink that I'm using for the bottom here is Make It Pink from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is a beautiful, fine cut baby pink that I thought was perfect for this project. Once I get that fully coated again, I will aggressively tap off the excess and let this sit on my rack to dry for a little less than an hour. Remember, we're using fast setting epoxy, so this will dry pretty quickly, but your try dry times may vary based on the epoxy that you're using. Once my glitter is all dry, I'm going to tap off the excess once again and spray seal it with some clear gloss spray paint. A generous coat is just enough. That'll dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then I'm going to apply my first coat of epoxy. You'll notice as I'm applying this coat, I'm working in sections. So I'm going to first epoxy the pink, and then I will go into the yellow. I want to start with the pink because it's the less aggressive of the two colors that I'm using. In other words, it's going to be a lot less noticeable if some of that pink gets into the yellow instead of the yellow getting into the pink. So that's why I started with the pink first. <laughs> but we spray sealed this really well, so our glitter isn't really gonna be moving a whole lot. I just wanna avoid going from top to bottom as I'm spreading the epoxy so I don't accidentally carry one color into the other. I'm gonna let this coat of epoxy dry for at least four to six hours, and then I'll come right back in with a second coat. All right, so that first coat was about 50 milliliters of epoxy. And my second coat is just going to be 20 milliliters of epoxy. I let that second coat dry for about eight hours or so, just about overnight, because I was done messing with it at that point. And then I actually did a third coat of epoxy before I went in to apply this vinyl. That third coat dried for about 12 hours before I moved on to the next step. The reason why is I wanted to have everything completely smooth and glossy before I applied this clear printed vinyl. This is that clear printed vinyl sheet from Banff Custom Creations. I absolutely love this stuff. And we are going to just apply it to the yellow section. I'm trying to recreate <laughs> the yellow plaid look from this iconic scene. We don't wanna apply these clear printed vinyl sheets to a uh, sanded surface. It can't be like foggy, you want it to be glossy. So the way that I'm gonna apply this is I'm going to expose about one inch of the vinyl by peeling back that paper backing and then trying to line it up on my cup as straight as possible making sure I have about one inch of excess vinyl on the top and the bottom. I've already trimmed this sheet. They come in 12 by 12 sheets. I just trimmed the mine in half for this, okay? And wanna make sure that everything kind of lines up properly before I get started. And then I'm going to use my vinyl scraper to press this onto the tumbler as hard as I can. This vinyl is different than regular printed vinyl or, you know, water slide. It doesn't have a lot of flex or stretch to it, okay? It's very rigid. It's a lot thicker, and you're going to see any kind of air bubbles if you leave those with the application, okay? So, not going to lie. <laughs> this stuff is kind of a struggle to apply to a 
glittered and epoxied cup because a glittered and epoxied cup isn't totally straight all the way around okay it's really hard to line this stuff up um, and you're gonna have wrinkles along you know that top rim which we'll address later it's no big deal okay but you'll notice that I'm working in smaller sections of application than I normally would with printed vinyl because I have to work in little sections at a time and pressing it as hard as I can to the cup. Also, if you pull up on this stuff after you've already pressed it onto the cup, you can run the risk of some sticky residue getting stuck onto the cup, which you will see through the vinyl after it's been epoxied if you're not careful. Okay, so I really do try to take my time with this stuff. I still think it's easier to lay a clear plaid this way than it would be for me to lay it like water slide because with a straight lined plaid pattern like this I'd just be afraid of getting any kind of distortion with stretching and stuff like I do sometimes get with water slide you can do this whatever way works for you this is just which way works for me okay <laughs> so anyway I'm just working really slowly leaving that paper backing on for as long as I can and pressing very small sections at a time. Once I get to the end there, I'm just going to trim off the excess that's overlapping there with my craft knife. Yes, we have a seam there, but I'm gonna take care of that later. And then as far as trimming the top and the bottom, I'm going to outline where I need to trim those sections off with some painter's tape, trying to make that tape as straight as possible. And then I'm going to run my craft knife along that tape line as my guide. You're gonna wanna place that tape line a little lower than you normally would on your top rim here because again, this particular vinyl is very rigid. It's a lot thicker and it's not going to stretch around the ridge of that top lip very well. Okay, so if we trim it down a little lower than we normally would, we're not gonna be fighting as hard with the wrinkles and puckering that you're gonna get up there around the top. Okay, and then after I've cut off that excess vinyl, I'm gonna go over this top rim with my heat gun, and that's really going to help me iron out any of the wrinkles that might be left along there up at the top. So I just get a little bit warm with my heat gun and then go over it with my vinyl scraper to really rub it down smooth. This is what we should end up with. Very nice, so cute. All right, and then for the bottom, I'm going to apply this heart pattern that I cut out with regular Oracle 651 vinyl. I made this pattern myself in Cricut Design Space, and I will create a separate video on how to create this pattern. I've already gone over in other videos how I make my own patterns in Cricut Design Space, which I'll also link down below. I just didn't want to include that process in this video because some of you have complained before when I've tried to squeeze that into one video because I think I kind of rushed through the explanation of it. So I will go into more detail on how to make this pattern in Cricut Design Space in a separate video and I will link it down below once it's done. Just give me a couple days on that um, because I couldn't film all these videos <laughs> at the same time. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to just wrap this around the bottom and I was slightly off with my measurement. So for that last row, I just cut that off and then placed it by hand in the center of the two remaining rows to make it look like I kind of did a good job lining them up. <laughs> I guess it's really hard to measure and get things exact when we're going over a cup that's been glittered and epoxied because things aren't completely straight all the way around without any sort of tapers, ridges, or bumps uh, like there would be before we glitter and epoxy, if that makes sense, all right? All right, and then I'm gonna apply my little decal right over the top of that plaid printed vinyl. I've already cut and weeded uh, my vinyl and here I am layering it. I just did a very slight offset that we created in Cricut Design Space. 
All right, and then I'm gonna apply this decal like I normally would using the hinge method. I've got some painter's tape to anchor one side of that decal. Then I'm going to measure twice, so I just have to cut once, make sure everything's nice and straight and lined up. All right, and then once I've got my decal applied, I did apply a thin coat of epoxy over this. Um, before I add my vinyl line details at the end. I didn't want to apply my vinyl lines quite yet because there's still some like ridges and seams and stuff there from that vinyl. So we are going to apply a real quick coat of epoxy. This is Alumalite's Fast Set and it was actually starting to cure on me <laughs> as I was spreading this. I waited too long uh, after mixing to apply it to the cup. I was just right there at the point where it was still workable. Uh, so anyway, I let that dry for about two hours. Again, this is a fast setting epoxy, so your dry time will vary based on the brand and type of epoxy that you're using. All right, and so after that coat was dry, I did have a little bit of sanding to do. Again, I applied epoxy that was nearly cured. <laughs> so I had quite a bit of sanding to do actually. Everything was just like wavy and messed up. So if this happens to you guys, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'll just try to sand it out the best that I can. Um, here I'm doing my regular rim sanding routine like I normally do. If you guys need help or guidance on how and when to sand your tumblers, I'll put a video down below that I think you'll find helpful. All right, and then once I was done sanding this out, I rinsed it under some dish soap and water, and then I was ready to add those vinyl line details. So I've already cut my vinyl lines. I've got these pink holographic ones, really pretty. I cut these in Cricut Design Space using the shapes feature. This is just a square that I've resized to 11.5 inches long by 0 0.20 inches tall, all right? And I'm cutting these out of just rainbow holographic vinyl. I will link the vinyl down in the description box, okay? And then for the seam on this plaid, I'm going to use regular black permanent vinyl that I've cut at 11.5 inches long by 0 0.10 inches tall. So this one's really super thin. Okay, and I'm going to place that right along the seam of that plaid just to make it look a little more finished. We're trimming off the excess with our craft knife. All right, and now I'm finally ready to move into my final coats of epoxy. This tumbler took two final coats back to back <laughs> before it was totally done, but that was it. So I know a lot of steps involved on this one, but I absolutely love how it turned out. You guys, let me know what you thought in the comments, and if you like my video, please be sure to give us a, a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.